What can you do <clears throat> with three weeks? We answered this question a few weeks ago, and we said the answer was to be inspired. We want to answer it in another way today. What can you do with three weeks? We want to say that you can inspire others. Make it your goal to inspire others in the next three weeks. And I want to begin uh, with our scripture reading this morning. appreciate Caleb reading that for us, but this is a, a very powerful passage. It's worthy of our consideration. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Do you understand it? If you know that power, you can benefit from that power. These are very strong words. The wise writer of Proverbs warns constantly about watching what you say. I want to consider four more passages from the book of Proverbs as we introduce our lesson. Look at Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9 says, With his mouth the godless man destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. We understand that there is a propensity upon people to talk bad about other people. And so what this passage is telling us is if we know better, we should do better. If you understand that about your neighbor, help your neighbor to do better. Do better yourself. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 18, the Proverbs writer says, There is one who speaks rashly like the thrusts of a sword. Just paint that picture. Do you understand that your words can be piercing? And then he says, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Not only can your words hurt, but this passage teaches us that your words can help. They can bring healing. In chapter 15 and verse 1, Proverbs 15 and verse 1, the writer says, a gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Do you know that there is power in the tongue to begin a battle and to bring a battle to an end? That's the power that your tongue has. It can create conflict and it can end conflict. And then in chapter 21 of Proverbs and verse 23, Proverbs 21 and verse 23, he who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from trouble. Haven't you too many times said something that you regretted? And this passage says you can save yourself the regret by controlling your tongue. We too often focus on the negative. It's easy to do, but look at the positive part of our scripture reading. The power of life is in your tongue. Your words are more powerful than you think they are. And so inspire others by, number one, spreading encouragement. You have the power in your tongue to spread encouragement. And I want to encourage you this morning to be intentional in that work. Intentionally spread encouragement to others. In Proverbs chapter 25... And verse 11, Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 11, the wise writer says, like apples of gold in settings of silver. Well, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Like apples of gold in settings of silver is a word spoken in the right circumstances. The King James Version says that it's fitly spoken. It's appropriately spoken. It, it fits the need of the moment. And it's a great gift to be able to say the right thing at the right time. It's a great gift to speak what's needed when it's needed. It reminds me of a New Testament passage in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. In Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6, Paul writes these important words. He says, let your speech always be with grace. Does that define the way you speak to others? Is your speech always seasoned with grace? Here he says, as it were, with salt, 
so that you may know how you should respond to each person. Now, I think it's a fair question this morning to ask, how do you always have gracious speech? And again, I want to say, be intentional. Intentionality is achieved by prayer. It's achieved by forethought. It's achieved by planning. You see, if your speech is always going to be seasoned with grace, you have to pray about it. You have to think about it. You have to plan it. And, and I want you to know that I've done it. And when I do, I can't wait to tell it. I, I honestly can tell you that there are times when, when, when I'm idle and I'm thinking about you. And I think about something that I want to say positive to you individually. And I can't wait to see you. Sometimes I'll just text it right away. Other times I might pick up the phone and call you. But in either case... I'm going to share something positive. I want to be intentional about spreading encouragement. And there's immense joy in this ministry. Make a deliberate effort in these three weeks to intentionally spread encouraging words. Listen to what Benjamin Franklin wrote. A slip of the foot, you may soon recover. But a slip of the tongue, you may never get over. Don't you still hold on to words that you spoke years ago? that you wish you could pull back? You see, that's what, that's what Benjamin Franklin is saying here. You can break a bone, and in a few weeks, that bone will heal, and you will move on as if it never happened. I've always found it interesting as one who's, who's been off injured that it's hard to remember that pain. It really is. In fact, if, if you could, maybe you wouldn't go back to doing what you did that got yourself hurt in the first place. But these athletes continue to go back. Words that you speak that injure others, you don't forget those feelings. We can build one another up through our words. However, being intentional is not enough. Good intentions don't bless anyone. Do you understand? You might, you might actually think to do it, but if you don't do it, then no one will be blessed. You might actually give it some forethought. You might have a plan, but you have to follow through. Move the good, well-meaning thought in your mind to your lips and determine to share it. You need to speak your appreciation, submit your affirmation, and verbalize your endorsement. Inspire, inspire others by spreading encouragement and be intentional. That's number one. Number two, inspiring others is going to require us to speak truth. And when we speak truth, we need to be insightful. You may often feel inadequate in, in offering advice or, or counsel. Many seem to be pursuing the wise sage. You know the scenario, don't you? The truth seeker climbs high into the Himalayas to find the wise old man. Everyone wants that profound philosopher distinguished in his wisdom and sound judgment. Actually, that's just an invention of Hollywood. How do we inspire others in three weeks be insightful by speaking truth, especially when asked for advice. Help your friends and family by telling them the truth of the situation. Truthful advisors are plentiful in Scripture, aren't they? Musing for only a minute will bring many to mind. Think of Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses, who said, you can't do everything. And, and that's exactly what Moses was trying to do. And his father-in-law said, you'll wear yourself out. And, and certainly he was because he tried to take ownership of all that needed to be done for God's people. And so his father-in-law said, slow down and delegate. Use others to accomplish God's purpose. Now, can you imagine that, that in doing all of that, Moses might have thought, think how, how proud my father-in-law must be of me. Maybe it caught him off guard that his father-in-law chastised him, rebuked him in this particular way. But you want the kind of people 
in your life who will tell you what you need to hear, who will tell you the truth. Joshua, leader of Israel, said, we're about to embark on a new adventure. You need to make some decisions for your household. Who can forget Nathan, a prophet of God, who said to David these memorable words, you are the man. I tell you, Nathan was David's best friend on that day, in that moment, on that occasion. You you could hope for no better friend than someone who would tell you what you needed to hear, who would tell you the truth. These are faithful men who gave truthful counsel. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15, the beginning part, Paul says that we're to speak the truth in love. And I'm telling you, if you know the truth and you withhold it from someone, you truly do not love that individual. If you love people, you're going to tell them the truth. A godly truth teller is a valuable friend. And he who has friends that will tell him the truth is to be most envied of all. Paul said in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 16, he, to paraphrase, said, Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I promise you, anyone who tells you the truth is not your enemy. These are people who care about you and your family. Jesus tells us that he's the truth. John chapter 14 and verse 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And the word of God is truth. John 17 and verse 17 Jesus said, sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. Assess your life and determine, am I seen as a truthful person? Tell the truth, not just in counsel, but in your everyday life. Have you fallen into the habit of exaggeration or fantasy? And and you know, that's easy to do. It's easy to tell things as you hope them to be. It's easy to tell a story that sounds better than than the truth. An insightful person determines whether they have deceit in their own lives and removes it. Look at Paul's words to the Colossians in Colossians chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. Colossians chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. Paul says, do not lie to one another since you've laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. You understand here we have the concept of of put off and put on. You have the concept of old and new. You have the concept of a lie and the truth. Be an inspiration to others by always telling the truth. Let's go back to the book of Proverbs. Look at Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22. Proverbs 12 and verse 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. It's really that simple. It's pleasing to God when we are truthful. And it's displeasing to God when we lie. People want to be around a person they know they can trust to be truthful. Inspire others by speaking truth and be insightful. That's number two. And number three, inspire others by sharing Christ. I want to encourage you this morning to be influential. And some have compared influence to to ripples on a lake. Haven't you ever stood by the water's edge and and picked up a rock and thrown it out as far as you could? And what happens when that that rock hits the water? Don't don't you have a 360-degree effect? Don't you see the ripples going out in every direction? That should be the influence that, that a Christian exerts. Others compare influence to a fast-spreading virus. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I don't really want to talk about the viruses anymore. I'm, I'm kind of out on that. In today's culture, you can speak of influence 
by talking about social media. I can't imagine a business that, that doesn't take advantage of social media. It's an influential platform. The truth is, unless you have absolutely no contact with anyone, you are being influential. But how are you influencing others? That's the question. You have the ability to change the culture where you are. You can change your home. Do you believe that? I remember in... 1995, when, when I was finished at Oklahoma Christian, Joseph was born on May 2nd. He wasn't even a full month old, and we were moving to Maryville, Missouri on my birthday, May 31st. And you understand the stress that comes with moving, I'm sure. It, it wasn't really the, the best day. But I remember going back up into the apartment in the midst of all the boxes and, and trying to get everything loaded up. And, and Jennifer is kind of sitting on the floor with Joseph laughing and talking to him. And I, I come up, I'm like, what are you doing? And she said, listen, I don't want him to remember this in an unhappy way. I want him to have a happy childhood. I want to create happy memories for him. And, and I was telling her this yesterday, and she, she said to me, she said, you know, um, you thought I was crazy. And, and I was like, no, no, I didn't. And I thought about it a little more. I said, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were crazy. I, I was like, we're in the middle of this move. We got all this work. And you're sick. He's not going to remember this. And you know what? Maybe he didn't remember that. Maybe he didn't. But I'm going to tell you right now, that kind of intentionality was a theme for the way she raised our children. She was influential in that. You can change your home, and you can change your workplace. I remember when Donnie first took his job as, as the executive of, of his company, how he, he told his employees, if you go to these questionable places, I'm not going to sign off on your expenses. He was changing the culture of that workplace, I visited with him a little bit about that yesterday, and, and he talked about how, you know, when the companies go out and they have dinner, and he said, of course he doesn't drink. And he said, some of the people there, if he drank, they'd drink. But because he doesn't drink, they don't drink. That's changing the culture of the workplace. And you, you have that power in your life. The New Testament inspires us to influence the world. Don't forget Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, and especially 13 and 16, that your salt and your light, and like Brother Jenkins said so many months and now years ago, shake and shine. Your salt, shake yourself out on the world. Your light, shine on the world. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, tells us how to make a difference in the lives of others. Look at Paul's words. In Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32. Again here, even though the language doesn't say it explicitly, we have this concept of put off and put on. He says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Put that away. Put it off. What do you pull out and what do you put on? Verse 32, and be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God and Christ has also forgiven you. Why should we use our influence? Why should we make a difference in others' lives? We want to inspire others by sharing Christ. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7... Part of this passage is very familiar to us. Paul says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. God has entrusted us with the saving power of the gospel. And then Paul goes on to say that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not from ourselves. May we, may we, may we never forget that when we, when we influence others, it's influence that comes from God. It is the power of of the gospel. 
that will make a difference in the lives of people. Sharing Christ with others is such a pleasure. I think that we've convinced ourselves that, that sharing the gospel of Christ is a burden. And it's not a burden. God has blessed us with this pleasurable work. You're sharing the treasure that people need. They need these truths from God's word. Look at Psalm 96, verses 2 through 4. In Psalm 96, verses 2 through 4, we see an example of the pleasure and the joy in sharing the truth about God. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared among all the gods. In your words are life, the power of the tongue. God's given us a power to give life to others. Use your words to influence others toward godliness. Help them to understand the way God wants them to live. Use your words to influence others toward salvation. Help them know that God does have a plan. And do that intentionally, insightfully, and influentially in the next three weeks. Look at Isaiah chapter 60. In Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3, Isaiah says, arise. You see, don't just let your light shine. Let it shine in a way that people can see it. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. When you let your light shine, you're letting others see the Lord. And they need to. In verse 2 it says, for behold, darkness will cover the earth. And deep darkness, the peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. You understand, we are living in a dark world, and God is expecting us to be the ones that lighten it up. Verse 3 says, and nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Do you believe that you can have that kind of influence? We see this picture of light and darkness. We are to be the light for the world. And so this morning, inspire others by spreading encouragement. Determine to use your tongue to encourage others. Inspire others by speaking truth. You will offend people from time to time. But I believe... Well-meaning, honest, good-hearted people in the end will appreciate you for speaking the truth and inspire others by sharing Christ. Now, we haven't said a lot about how to do that, but we've had many lessons that talk about how to do it. Inspire others by being intentional, insightful, and influential. And if you're not a child of God this morning... Our hope is that something has been said to inspire you. We want this to be a place where people are inspired to grow. And if you're not a New Testament Christian, all you have to do is believe that Jesus is who he said he was. Just read the Gospels. Read about all that he did and all that he stood for. And if you believe that he is God's son and you repent of your sins and you're willing to make a confession of that, then you can simply do what Jesus asked you to do to have your sins forgiven and be saved. You can be buried with him in baptism. And if you do that, then you become part of God's army to inspire others. And if you're a part of that army this morning and you haven't felt very inspired lately, but you know that God wants you involved in this work. And you need prayers for inspiration. All of it comes from Christ. And so if you have a need to respond to his invitation today, won't you let it be known as together we stand and sing.